let's add a shield to this guy now. <clears throat> so what we're going to do in order to add a shield to him is we are going to uh, create a sphere that is going to be big enough to encircle him. Um, <clears throat> so let's go to the player in the hierarchy menu. I'm going to expand his drop down menu here and uh, I'm going to right click on him and create my 3D object that way. <clears throat> so there is my sphere. Since I created it um, as childed to the player in the first place by um, by first selecting the player and then right clicking on that to create the thing, then um, it already has centered itself on the center of the character. So you can see the sphere is outlined there, but it's inside him. It's it's still, uh, you know, one unit across, one unity unit in measurement. And so uh, it's inside him and we can't really see it. So in order to make this um, encircle him the way we want, let's just make it bigger. So I'm just going to go up here to the scale and double the size in every dimension. And that's that's bigger, but it's not enough bigger. So um, instead of two, let's try like two point five. Um, yeah, point five, two point five. <clears throat> okay, that's a little bit. That's close. The hat is sticking up a little bit, and I'd like to keep it inside there. So let's um, let's see. Um. I wonder if we just pull the thing northward a little bit. I want to see if I'm keeping his feet inside it, if I pull the thing up just a little bit. So um, that keeps his feet in. Um, <clears throat> and it looks like his hat is inside, almost perfectly inside. I uh, got a little sliver of hat there. Let's make this 2.6, and that should do it. I don't want it any bigger um, than it has to be to fully enclose him, just because I don't think it would look very good. <clears throat> okay, so um, there we have it. Um, so I've selected the player. Uh, if you just select the sphere, then you just see the ball, right? If I click on the player in the hierarchy, then it, it highlights not only the uh, the original capsule shape that was the, the basis of the player, but all it outlines all of the child objects as well. So you can kind of see them all there, and, and that's kind of what it'll look like. Now, here's the new part of this, is that if I grab the sphere in the hierarchy here, and then I come over to the inspector, right next to where its name is written, there's a little checkbox. And if you uncheck that, then it deactivates the, um, <clears throat> the game object in the scene. So it, it, it's no longer there. I mean, it's it's still there as far as the, the game knows that it's there, but as far as the um, it can't interact with the scene at all when it's uh, when it's deactivated like that. <clears throat> so that is uh, what we're going to do to have our shield work. We're going to raise and lower the shield by in code getting to this little checkbox and and raising and lowering the shields. First, um, let's make the shield actually look a little more proper. Uh, right now, it. It just looks like a big giant ball, and that's not we. When when we're looking at the enemy player and he's running along and he raises his shields, we don't want him to just turn into a giant ball. That's not the right look. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a special material. Um, we're going to give him invisible paint, uh, and that's what we're going to put on this sphere. So I'm going to go into the materials folder down here in the project tab, and then I'm going to create myself a new material. Here we are. There's my new material. I'm going to name it shield. Uh, I don't know, shield color. And that's plenty good enough. Shield color. Right now, I'm going to add that first thing to the actual ball. It's not going to change color because right now, the, the shield color is still just white. But when I get into the inspector here and start messing with the color of my of my shield color material, I want to see it reflected in the changes that I'm making up here because it's already at this point painted with uh, with my shield color. So <clears throat> first thing we're going to do to the shield color material is we're going to go up here where it says shader right under shield color. I'm in the inspector and it says shader standard. We don't want to use the standard shader. Um, that's a lie. Uh, we're going to the rendering mode. We're gonna do we're gonna do some shader stuff with other things later, but right now we're just going to the rendering mode. So standard shader still, rendering mode. Uh, we don't want opaque anymore. Opaque means that it stops light, it reflects light. So if it's opaque, um, you can't see through it. The opposite of opaque is transparent. So we're gonna grab a transparent shader. 
um, a transparent rendering mode rather. <clears throat> now, when we go to our color here, I'm gonna I'm gonna click and open my color picker, and um, in addition to the three colors, red, green, and blue that we have here, we also have an A right here. Uh, this is the transparency level. So um, what, first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab like I I don't know I think a blue color is going to be fine. So I'm going to turn the thing blue. And then I'm going to go down here to this A uh, slider, and I'm going to just start turning it down. And that looks pretty nice right there. I like that. That's uh, That looks like an some sort of an energy barrier around him. You know, I think I'm going to slide this a little more towards um, like a lighter blue. I don't know why I like that better. It doesn't matter. Uh, the main thing is that you guys are able to get the rendering mode of your material to be transparent as opposed to opaque, and that you remember how to set the transparency level so it's not completely transparent. We still want to be able to see that it's there and um, and get things to look the way that you want them. So now, of course, if we go back to the sphere, um, we can raise the shields and lower them, and that's that's what it's going to look like in-game when, when the shields come on. It's just going to kind of block him a little bit, but you're still going to see the character inside. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. <clears throat> now we're going to need to um, have code that will allow us... Uh, to from from the keyboard while we're playing the game raise the shields and 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 lower them again So let's head over here to Visual Studio. We've got our player stats uh, script and what I'm gonna do now is um, <clears throat> We're gonna add a new kind of Variable here. Let's see. I don't want to be in start function yet. Let's go up here. I'm gonna add to my variables I don't want to be in start function at all. That was weird. Okay, so in my list of variables, I'm going to add another brand new type of variable that you haven't seen yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a game object. Capital G, A-M-E, capital O, B-J-E-C-T. Um, and I'm going to call it uh, player shield. So <clears throat> now we have we have this variable called player shield and it's gonna the type of information that it holds is a reference to a game object it doesn't hold the actual game object the actual game object is over here in in the game scene right this is not a piece of code this is a this is a thing in the game <clears throat> uh, which is represented by code but that's that's pretty deep uh, so we're grabbing a thing in the um, we're grabbing this object and storing not the whole object in here, we're storing a reference to the object so that um, when we use this in code, we can actually get to it. Okay, so now when we go down to the start function, right here it is saving some, uh, it's storing some values uh, into our, assigning values into our variables. So max health gets a value of 100. Current health gets a value of whatever's in max health. Uh, player name gets a value of Bob, you remember this. So <clears throat> how do we put the appropriate game object into our new player shield variable? How do we let, how do we, how do we store the thing into the variable so that, so that when we go to the variable, there's actually the right game object in it? Well, we can't encode, um, at least not, not easily in a way that is worth us uh, considering here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to the game object and we're gonna make, uh, or, or to, the, to this game object variable, and we're gonna make it public. This is new. So I'm just going to go to the beginning of the line where it says game object player shield, and I'm going to write the word public, P-U-B-L-I-C. And that is going to do it. What the word public does here, notice it's green, right? This is, this is a, a piece of code. This means something to the computer. Um, and what it means is that this um, player shield variable is going to be visible to other code that is not inside the brackets here. Right now, all the rest of these variables, because they've been declared inside the class, uh, whoa, minimized that, in because they've been very uh, declared inside the class brackets right here, um, they only exist inside the class brackets. No other piece of code that we might make in this game is able to get to our max health variable. It's only inside of here. However, the player shield now, because we made it a public variable, um, it's going to be visible outside of that. Now, here's what that looks like. Let's save. 
And let's go back over to the Unity editor. I'm going to grab my player. And on that, we can see we have our, in the inspector, we have our player stats script. And now we have, it says player shield. And there's a, there's a field here where we can put something in. In that field, it says none, which means that there's nothing in it. What's in it? None. And what kind of a thing can it have? It can have a game object. So in order to um, have our code know what we're actually talking about, right here in, in uh, the editor, I'm going to grab the sphere. The sphere is the game object that we want to have. Now, I'm, I'm going to change the name of this because sphere is a horrible name for a thing. So let's name it shield. Mm -hmm. D. <clears throat> okay, so... I'll go back to the player now. So we're going to drag the... I'm just going to grab with the mouse and drag this shield object right out and drop it into the field of our player shield um, variable. Okay, so that's it. Now we don't have to, in the start function, all of a sudden... Um, <clears throat> Uh, store a value into it. We don't. We don't have to assign that value. It's already pre-assigned over here in in um, in the Unity editor. So <clears throat> we can actually get to the shield, uh, to the player shield variable from Unity's side and from the code side. So that's uh, that's going to make our life kind of easy, being able to take certain variables and make them public and mess with them uh, without having to go back to the code. Okay, um, before we move on, I want to kind of point out a little bit about how it's displaying um, this text, lowercase p, capital S with no, um, no space in between. Over here, player shield, this is exactly the same thing that I have highlighted right here. Um, it's just that <clears throat> with variables, you always have a lowercase first, uh, first character on it, right? And you capitalize any letter that marks the beginning of a new word. You don't have a space for the new word. Now, when we're writing in English, you normally would capitalize anything that's the name of something. A proper noun would have a capital, right? So over here in Unity, it kind of translates that. We have a capital P and we have a space before we have capital shield. So <clears throat> Unity kind of interprets um, the name and, and displays it in a way that is sort of more English as opposed to more code. Um, and it does the exact same thing with everything else. <clears throat> so all of these like capsule collider right here, um, it is trigger is is the name of something inside. That's that's probably just a variable inside the capsule collider script that is part of one of these libraries, right? Or a different library that we don't actually have access to at the moment. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. It would have a lowercase i, no space, and then a capital T. So uh, Unity, the way that it dis displays things here in the inspector, is kind of translating that for us so that it makes it easier to look at for um, <clears throat> for people who are not code people. Unity is designed for um, a lot of people who are not the code people in the game to be able to get in here and and easily figure out what they're doing, understand what they're looking at, and start moving things around in the scene view so that they can um, they can build the world. Like the guys who write the code are not necessarily the guys who know how where to put everything in the scene so that it's fun to play. <clears throat> so that's the whole point of this of this interface is that we can actually look at it and understand what we're doing. And that's why that's why it uh, player shield is capitalized with space as opposed to the way that we wrote that in here. <clears throat> okay. So now we have our game object uh, variable. We have a way to get to this. And um, it's already populated with our shield. Now the fun part. Let's make the shield work. So <clears throat> um, I'm going to come down here. And you guessed it. We are going to write an if statement that makes a key press raise the shields. Same thing that we did up here. We had a key press. And that uh, did some stuff, right? So I'm actually just going to grab this again. No, let's let's write it out this time. Um, so just to review what makes a beautiful um, if statement, I'm going to write if, space, both parentheses, space, and just my first bracket, and hit enter. And there's the entire structure for my if statement. Done. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, in here, we're going to go input dot get key and i'm not going to go for get key down this time 
This time what I want to do is <clears throat> I want to have the shields up, um, the, the shields existing in the scene for as long as I hold the key down. And I want them to, I want the shield to disappear as soon as I release the key. So um, <clears throat> I don't want to, I don't want to know when I actually am uh, pressing the key and it has a downward motion. And I don't want to know when I'm releasing the key and it has an upward motion. I, I suppose we could do it with those as well. But right now I'm just going to use get key. Like if the key is engaged, then the shield happens. That's, I think, as far as triggering it, that's the simplest way. Um, <clears throat> So regular get key, not get key up, not get key down. And the key that I'm going to use is, let's use, um, let's use um, key code. Notice um, we have a lot of suggestions here. The alpha one means that we are getting the number one key from the alphabet side of the keyboard as opposed to the numerical keypad side of the uh, of the keyboard. So I'm actually going to use that. I like that. Um, let's use alpha one. Let, uh, so our, our player one is eventually going to have like key number one is going to raise the shield and key number two is going to fire the fireball. Um, so we're just going to grab alpha one and that will raise the shields. <clears throat> okay. So in order to um, to manipulate what's on our uh, game object, we have to get, remember, to this uh, on the shield object, we have to get to this checkbox. This is the, the active checkbox. Is the game object activated or deactivated in the scene? So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to go to our player shield, uh, e player shield, and we're going to say player shield dot. And that dot is going to allow us to get to some of the functions that are available. Um, <clears throat> In the uh, in the libraries up here that uh, that define what a game object is, they uh, as part of the code have a number of different functions that we can get to that will help us manipulate that thing. And so the function that we're going to get to, <clears throat> player shield is holding our game object, and we're accessing the game object's inherent functions. And this one is called set active. So player shield dot set active, and then we have to have some parentheses and, of course, a semicolon. I always add that stuff for some reason first. And we are going to perform the set active function, and we're going to feed it the value true. So what that's going to mean is that um, <clears throat> the active checkbox is yes, checked. Yes, it's true. Um, so that's, that's what that's going to do. Um, let's save and test this real quick. I'm going to save. So uh, I've got a player here. <clears throat> okay, let's hit play. When it switches to the game tab, then we're active. Okay, so I'm gonna hit my number one key and shield came up. Good. I am not holding the one key anymore and the shield is still up. The whole reason why I used get key instead of get key down or get key up was because I want it to turn back off when I release the key and it's not doing that right now. So let's figure that out. Um, the reason it's um, it's not turning back off is because I haven't told it ever to turn back off. I need to have some other code um, that that does set active and then false that unchecks that that clicks that thing to turn it back off. Okay, so in order to get to that, we are going to use the other half of an if statement the other half. So here's, um, there's, there's more than one half of this. Um, okay. So what this is, we're going to do an if else statement. So we have, if the key is pressed, then do this else. Um, put some brackets in here else do the opposite, right? We don't have to do the opposite, but in that case, that's what we want. So I'm going to copy that and paste it down here. And I'm just going to set this to false. Okay. So um, <clears throat> this is all one big statement. What this is saying, this is not, this is not two different things. This can't exist without the first half. Um, <clears throat> so what we're saying is that if this thing is actually true, then do this. Otherwise, if it's not true, do this instead. 
So if the key is actually pressed, then it's going to make sure that the um, that the checkbox is checked into being active. And if I release it, then that's not true, and it's going to make sure that the thing is um, turned inactive. Um, <clears throat> The weird thing about this is that because this is a get key, then every time that the update function runs every frame, so theoretically 60 frames per second, um, as long as I hold, like if I continuously hold the one key down, then it's going to make this happen. It's going to, it's like, it's going to flip the light swatch switch on over and over and over and over and over and over 60 times per second. So, I mean, if you walk into your bedroom in the dark and you turn the light switch on and then you, like, flip your hand up again, you hit the light switch <clears throat> upwards a bunch of times, it doesn't turn the light back off if you do it again. It doesn't do anything if you do it the second time because it's already on. So it's not like it becomes more on or, or something different. It just, like, <clears throat> you can keep pushing it upwards and it doesn't change what's happening. Now, honestly, we don't really need to be spending computing power on making sure that this is turned on over and over and over and over every every frame but um this allowed for me to to uh go to the if else thing and to use get key with you guys so uh i I'm, main thing is i wanted to show you some stuff here so <clears throat> when you make your own game and you're deciding how what, what's the best way to handle this in code, you might very well decide that this exact kind of a thing is better handled by a single if statement uh, with a get key down and another if statement with the get key up. Uh, so we could we could have one trigger only when uh, we want this to be true and the other trigger only when we release the key and that would set it false. So um, those are options. Okay, now now I've got uh, I've got it set true and false. Let's save it and see if our uh, shield turns back off. Catch up, Unity. Okay. Here we go. So, press the one key, shield is up. Release the one key, shield goes back down. Uh, that's exactly what we want. Okay. That looks nice. I like that. <clears throat> okay. Now, um, it functions. That's awesome. Uh, but what it doesn't do is deplete our mana. What we want is for our magic power to power this shield. And if you run out of magic power reserves, then um, <clears throat> then then the shield should drop, okay? So um, leaving you exposed. You can't just run around the whole level with your shield up, blocking everybody's fireballs and never being a target. That makes the game not fun. So let's make this thing uh, deplete our mana. So if we go back here, it was this um, strength stamina mana dot Z, right? Uh, there's a vector three, there's three numbers stored in this. So the first one is, the first number is going to represent our strength. The second one is going to represent our stamina. And the third one is going to represent our mana. So that's why the dot Z is the actual mana amount. So um, <clears throat> let's have every frame that this runs, let's have it reduce our magic a little bit. So I'm going to um, up here, I've already got a nice line of code that's, that changes the strength, stamina, mana uh, number. So I'm just going to copy that. And then I'm going to paste it down here for in the, in the first half of our it's if statement. So when the shield is true, when it's turned on, that's when it should be um, depleting our mana. So I'm just going to paste that in there. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's where I just put that. Strength, stamina, mana equals new vector three. And we're going to use the exact same number over here, except that instead of subtracting 10, um, remember, this is, going to, this is going to run 60 times per second. So if we subtract 10 every, time, every frame, 60 times per, per second, that means that in one second, we'll have depleted 600 mana off of our meter in one second. Okay, that's not realistic. That's not how the game should run. Um, <clears throat> if we were to instead have it remove one from our meter, um, that's still going to that's that's gonna remove uh, in one second 60 mana. So I, I'm assuming that our, our mana meter is going to have something like 100 as its maximum value. So if in one second we use up 60% of the entire thing, that's that's really fast. Um, I don't think the shields are, are that valuable. Uh, let's make it 0 0.1. And 
we might actually want to to make this number bigger or smaller or something. Uh, it doesn't really matter right now what the number is. We just kind of get it in the ballpark so it seems to work in the game. And then we can go back once the game is, is fully playable and start fine-tuning these numbers and, and making sure that everything works the way we want it to and, and that the game feels right. Okay. So we've got that number in there. I'm going to save and come back over here. So... Uh, we're in the console. <clears throat> How? I forgot something. How are we going to tell how much mana we actually have? Do we have a way to do that? Um, so we have a debug.log uh, here. If we press M, it's going to represent um, some magical action, and it's going to take away 10 mana and then display in a debug.log what uh, what our new mana amount is. But we don't want to have to press M to see how much we've depleted here. Let's actually grab the same line of code, the debug.log that shows the, the amount of mana left. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste it in here, just so that we have a way to look at that. Eventually, we're going to want to display this in in a in a, a bar, you know, like a health bar, a mana bar, um, some some sort of uh, UI element that that will show us uh, graphically how how much we have. <clears throat> okay, so this for right now should help tell us what we have. So I'm going to save again and switch back over here. When we hit play. Our start function is still telling us that our player's name is Bob. And now, let's see what happens when I press 1. Okay, it's depleting our mana. 70, 60, 50, 100, 40s, 30s. So um, when I release it, the shield goes away and it stops depleting our mana. Um, this, I don't know, maybe we want it to go faster, maybe we want it to go slower, but for right now... Uh, this thing seems to be working, and I am pretty happy with it. So, um, <clears throat> that's pretty good. Here we go. Let's deplete our mana down to the 20s, under 10, and all of a sudden we're into the negatives. I have negative 13 mana, and I can still turn my shield on. So right now, this is, this is not good. Um... <clears throat> We need to make sure that the shield doesn't work anymore uh, when we when we don't have any more mana because we don't want to just keep spending mana that doesn't exist. That's that's not how the game feels right. So let's go back to um, Visual Studio, and what we want to do is we want to change a little bit this if statement. Right now, it's just checking to see if we have the key pressed. But what we want is we want it to check to see if the key pressed and to see if there's enough mana left to actually have this thing be active. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a second true-false test. And we're going to do that with a logic um, manipulator here that is, um, uh, this is shift seven on my keypad. It's that little ampersand and. <clears throat> so we're going to have two logic tests. First, Input dot get key. Uh, we're going to see if, if somebody's pressing the number one key. And then we are going to check to see if strength stamina mana dot Z. I'm just going to copy that rather than paste it or rather than type it. Strength stamina mana dot Z. And then we are going to compare with the greater than less than. So it needs to be greater than zero. May as well make it zero F. <clears throat> So if we drop below zero, then uh, or if we hit actual zero, then strength stamina mana dot z is is going to be false, right? This this comparator here is going to be false. Uh, strength stamina mana will not be greater than zero. That's false. And so um, <clears throat> the first half might be true, but the second half is false. That means that the combined total of the thing is not true, right? Um, it's like if I if 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 half of it is true and the other half is false, that doesn't make the whole thing be true. We need the whole thing to be true um, in order to trigger this if statement. So once we drop below there, it will go and trigger the else instead, and it will turn the shield off. At least that's what we want. <clears throat> so I'm going to save. I'm going to come back over here, and uh, we'll hit play and spend 
Nine minutes, waiting to deplete all of our mana all the way. Shield is up, mana's depleting. 50s, 40s, 30s, getting there. And here we go. Bam. Okay, it turned off. I'm pressing the one key over and over and over, and the shield is not coming back up. It still let us drop into the negatives, though, a little bit, and that's um, <clears throat> that seems kind of weird to me. Um, I don't feel like we should be able to go into negative mana, so let's do one more thing to kind of clean this up, and then we'll... I think the shields are pretty much done how we want them, at least until we get fireballs and, and, and the shields have to actually have to do something about those fireballs. Um, so let's go back over here, and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to have this be... Um, zero anymore. Uh, when when this thing runs, it's going to take away 0 0.1 mana off of our mana meter. So let's make it be that it ha we have to have more than 0 0.1 for this to work. So I'm just going to make that 0 0.1, and that's going to be the test uh, as to whether our if statement gets triggered or not. <clears throat> so uh, one more time, save. Just tr test it to be sure. Here we go. And shields up. The waiting game. I could actually go in and, and tell the start menu to, uh, to change that so we don't have to deplete all the way from 100. Um, but I'm, we're almost done with this, and it wasn't that big a deal. Bam! Shield turned off. Won't turn back on, and we still have mm, 0 0.00095. It's still a positive number, right? We haven't gone, uh, we, we didn't get one extra frame of free shield usage um, from, from our... Um, <clears throat> from our mana stash. So uh, that seems right to me. I think that's that's exactly how we want that to work. So um, that's going to be it for this video. We got shields working and uh, onward and upward.